Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So um, today we are going to review the Dolly Oberon One bookshelf speaker. Ever since I started this channel, occasionally I'll get a comment where someone's like, what do you think about Dolly speakers? And I've never heard Dolly speakers, so here we go. I got my hands to, I got, got my hands, got a chance to get my hands on these. I borrowed them from a friend um, who bought them recently. And um, so yeah, we're going to get into it. I'll tell you about what they sound like. Um, I'll give you some comparisons and we'll wrap it up. As far as specs and stuff like that, feel free to hop on their website and read the, that kind of stuff. I'll leave links below and maybe I'll leave it on the screen if I feel like it. But um, the ones that stand out to me are the tweeter is a little bit bigger than usual at 29 millimeters. That's a little bit larger than an inch. Um, and then the mid base driver is gonna be a five and a quarter inch wood uh, paper kind of hybrid, which I found kind of interesting because like at first I thought it was just marketing jargon because I'm like wood paper paper comes from wood. So like, was that just a fancy way of saying a paper cone? Um, that's what I thought initially, but after hearing it, I kind of changed my mind. So um, another thing I wanna talk about real quick, as far as like a standout feature goes, is this finish. This is without a doubt the best vinyl finish I have ever seen in my life on anything. Personally, I freaking hate vinyl finishes. I think speakers should be painted or real wood veneers but this is so convincing. It's like super textured. Like you can hear it when I run my fingers across it. Like it looks convincing. It feels convincing. Like wherever they get this from, like any other company using like vinyl finishes, like try to use something like this. This is so good. Um, anyhow, um, I, actually I'm, I'm gonna just, let me bring it back to the vinyl finish real quick. This is how convincing it was. I did an earlier take of this video where I talked about how good it was and I was like, ah, it might be wood. And I stopped recording. I went upstairs and I actually researched it and I had to pull out the, um, or download the brochure from Dolly. That's the only place where they mention it's a vinyl finish. They refer to it as a high quality vinyl finish and they're not exaggerating. It's phenomenal. So super cool that I'm gassing that up because I'm not the biggest fan of this thing. Besides that, let's get into the sound signature. So up top, that larger tweeter is gonna play larger. It's gonna be definitely on the bright side. It's gonna be forward. Now, one of the benefits of that is it will project into the room very well, and it is gonna give you great, great amounts of detail. Unfortunately, it is also gonna give you sibilance, not just with S sounds either. I have never in my life heard an F sound sibilant. Now, I'm talking about the letter F as in Frank, or like F for the word fire. The Ellie Golding song, Burn, when she says fire, there was sibilance to it. The F sounded like an S. That's how bright these are. They are so bright, Dolly knows they're bright, and they advise you use them with the grills on and never tow them in. And that is how I listen to them, but I just wanna make it clear, even doing that, grills on, not towed in whatsoever. They are still bright. They can definitely come across come across harsh in some recordings and quite a bit more sibilant than I have heard from any other speaker. And that is connected to my Kinky Studio preamp and monoblock power amplifiers that are slightly on the smoother side of neutral and very refined. So if you've got cheaper equipment that's not the most refined, I'm not sure what your experience will be. Let's move down to the mid range. That same like imaging is there, it's front and center, it's very good. And I must admit, vocals were fleshed out very, very well, a little bit better than the Focal Aria 906 that I love so much, and those are $2,000 a pair. These are only 600, so it's not all bad. Um, the um, mid range overall, I did find quite good, but again, because these were so forward in the top end, there was like an extra, I don't know how to describe it, but I guess it's a little bit like the Monitor Audio Bronze 100, where it sounded like every singer's voice was one octave higher than it was supposed to be. Um, I don't know if everyone will notice that, but I definitely did. Let's move down to the bass. There's no mid, -ba there's no mid bass bloat to speak of, um, and these don't extend tremendously low. They are very small, but the bass that is there was actually very tight, very well textured, very articulate and this is where I changed my opinion from originally thinking the wood fiber cone was just marketing jargon to 
maybe they're onto something here because um, I, I must admit the the bass tonal quality was something I found very pleasing um, at its price point of just $600 and especially for the size. I wouldn't call them bass shy. I would just say they have about as much bass as you would expect from the size. So we've got some like weird things going on essentially. It's a winner in some categories where like the vocal vocals are like super fleshed out well, but they sound an octave too high. The bass quality is like very good, but there's not a whole lot of it. We get a lot of detail up top in the treble region, but your ears are assaulted like fucking crazy when you listen to them. It's not a good combination of things in my opinion, which leads me to say $600, it's a bit too much for this speaker and simply not worth it. Yeah, it is what it is. Now, if you're a European customer, they will be cheaper for you. Um, it looked like the average European price was closer to about 400 bucks. I did find some websites even where they were as low as $375. Now, that's US, so converted to you know Euro and GBP, it was obviously a different figure, but that's about what they came out to. And around that price, I'd say it's quite a bit better, but the top end being so forward and lacking refinement is an unfortunate combination because here's where I'm at. So let's say I'm in Europe where they're cheaper, 400 bucks or so. If these are on my radar at 400 bucks, that means I'm putting together, uh, you know, let's, let's call it a mid-fi rig, if you will. It means my, you know, preamp power amp or integrated amp is somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,000 or less. I'm probably using something like an IOTA VX SA3. Um, it's not, like, if my $6,000 separates couldn't smoothen these out and give them a little bit of refinement, like, nothing under $1,000 will. So you're going to be left with something that is going to be pretty fatiguing. And I do have room treatment to help bring that down. So... I think these are going to be good for three people. Person one, your room is dull as fuck for one reason or another. You've got big heavy curtains. You've got a shag fucking carpet from the 70s. You've got that popcorn ceiling shit going on. I don't know. For whatever reason, your room is just fucking dull. These speakers will sound good in that room because most speakers will sound dull in your room. So something overly bright, probably going to sound normal. Person two. You're old as shit, so you're deaf as fuck. No offense, it just happens, guys. I just turned 38 a few days ago. I'm no spring chicken. But we must all admit, you know, and all jokes aside, as we age, we lose some hearing. Especially some of you guys, 65 plus, you know you've been to a ton of Grateful Dead concerts, listening to a speaker right in your face just like for hours and hours, right? Like, you took some hearing damage. Accept it, you know, put the ego aside. No big deal. It's we're, None of us are going to have great hearing at 65. It is what it is. Because if your hearing isn't that good, you're not going to hear that like harshness as much. Instead, you're going to hear openness and clarity. And these, they have tons of openness and clarity, honestly. It just, it's a bit of an assault as well. Um, person three, these are good for. Maybe you're my age, but you've been using in-ear like headphones for a long time, blasting them to high hell while you're in the gym, been hitting concerts, music festivals, you crank the subwoofer in your car like crazy, so you've taken some hearing damage, and you don't you don't have the your ears just aren't that resolving in the higher end, so you need something again on the brighter side. At the end of the day, if you're fairly young like me and you've got good good hearing, you're gonna hear these speakers and you're gonna say, "Fuck that shit, I don't want that." Um, they are bright, man, and I I know treble is like super personal. But I, like the speaker I listen to most of the time for reference is the Focal Aria 906, and that's on the forward side of neutral. That's a little bit brighter. Focal is known for being a little bit brighter. So it's not like I'm coming from something dull like a Wharfdale. Not that Wharfdale is dull, but Wharfdale is warmer sounding, a little bit softer up top. I'm not coming from a Wharfdale and being like, oh, these are too bright. Like, no, I'm coming from something that's already on the brighter side. And I'm like, yo, this shit is too fucking bright. So... Oversized 29 millimeter tweeter, what for? It should be smaller, honestly. It doesn't like need that shit. I, I don't know. It's like when I hear speakers like that, it just makes me think like all the engineers that work at Dolly must be old as hell. I don't know. I, or they're one of those companies, maybe they just do like the measurements only. Nothing is tuned by ear. They don't even listen to it. They just maybe design it and 
build it and send it. I don't know. Let's do comparisons real quick. 600 bucks. Let's compare it to the ELAC DBR62. Um, that speaker is a little bit bright up top as well. Nowhere near as this. Um, this will be more detailed. Both are imaging champions. The Dolly is actually going to image a little bit better. Both have excellent mid-range where the vocalist projects into the room isn't at well and is very well flushed out. Uh, whereas the Dolly bumps up the singer's voice an octave, the ELAC DBR62 does not, so it is the more accurate. The DBR62 has been described by some people as a smidgen boring. I don't find them boring, but if you do, I don't know, maybe you'll like the over-the-top dollies. I'd say the DBR62 is a way better choice than the Dolly Oberon 1. Uh, let's move down to the base of the two speakers. Um, they both actually are very similar in the base department. Both ELAC DBR62 and Dolly Oberon 1, base quantity is low and base quality is very, very high. With the major difference being that ELAC DBR62 being larger is going to have a little bit more base quantity and it does have a little bit of a mid bass bump. Let's see, what else can we compare this bad boy to? 600 bucks. Let's compare it to the Monitor Monitor Audio Bronze 100. That is a much larger speaker with an 8 inch driver. However, let's do it anyway. Um, they're both going to be on the forward side of neutral, though these are going to be brighter and a little bit less refined than the Monitor Audio Bronze 100. Again, both image crazy good, very, very good. But the Monitor Audio Bronze 100, I will say, will take the edge in terms of imaging. It's one of those things that's 600 bucks, it just images better than it has any right to do. And by the way, the Monitor Audio Bronze 100 is very similar to the Dolly Obron 1, whereas European customers are more likely to find them for about 400 bucks. Anyhow, so uh, that's the top end. The Dolly Obron 1 is gonna have more detail. Um, the uh, Monitor Audio Bronze 100, while it's gonna have a little bit less detail by direct comparison, it will be the cleaner sound. It will be less fatiguing for most people, I believe, and more refined sounding. Moving down to the mid-range, vocals are flushed out more on the Dolly Oberon 1. The Monitor Audio Bronze 100 is going to have more dialogue, clarity, and voice intelligibility for those of you that are going to use it for a TV or theater system. So I actually sold my Monitor Audio Bronze 100s because I didn't like them very much. And then I bought another pair for TV use upstairs because they are so good at dialogue, clarity, and voice intelligibility. Um, let's move down to the bass. Neither speaker has a mid bass bump. Moving down to the bass overall, the Dolly is going to be tonally more textured and articulate with its bass than the Monitor Audio Bronze 100. The Bronze 100 is no slouch in that region. The uh, Obron 1 is just a little bit richer tonally. However, the Monitor Audio Bronze 100 being an 8 inch driver is going to extend much, much, much lower in its frequency response and give you quite a bit more bass. So that's my comparison. I'm not going to really compare this thing to anything else because honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, if you can't tell. If you have any questions, let's chat about it in the comments below. And until next time, later.